function. So I give you a little bit of evidence, and it's your job to find what the exponential of a function could be. There's going to be a little bit of freedom here. We'll have some choices to make. But before I do that, I want to take a second, take a deep breath, and just talk about exponential functions for a second. This might be, for some people, like, oh, now I get what exponential functions are all about. Or it could be just bringing your thoughts into focus. On this side of the line, over here, I'm going to work on functions like y equals 2 to the x, or y equals 3 to the x, or y equals 7 to the x, or y equals 20 to the x. All of those functions have a lot of similarities. They're very, very similar looking. And in fact, your notes, your assignment, just categorizes those all and says, if we're talking about y equals a to the x, if a greater than 1, all of those functions look very, very similar. Here's what they have in common. And notice, on purpose, I'm not, I didn't, I almost did this morning, I almost put a grid up here, one of those 10 by 10. I didn't do that here. I don't want the scale. I want to just talk about what these basically look like. If you're just walking down the street, and a function comes walking up, and it looks like this, you'll know it's an exponential function. They all look like this, with a greater than 1. They all go asymptote, specific point, specific point, in just a second. It's the only point I'm going to put on the whole graph, and then they go, woo, gone, like that. Yes? Let's talk about all the things that is true about all of those ones, whether it's 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 7 to the x, anything greater than 1, they're all going to do this before I transform them, okay, before I do any transformations. They're all going to have horizontal asymptote <coughs> negative x-axis, and I'll write the equation there, y equals 0. They're all going to go to that asymptote, yes? They're all increasing. I think I'm actually stealing the first question of your assignment, the first real question in there. You had to do a bunch of graphs, and then you had to answer questions. They're all increasing. They all go up as we go left to right. There's one specific point that is on all of those graphs. Zero, comma, one. All have y intercept of one. Somewhere before the test, those three things have to become entrenched about exponential functions. Immediately go, okay. That's what a basic exponential looks like when the a is greater than 1. Now, good news. All the ones that are like 1 half x, 1 half to the x, y equals 1 third to the x, y equals 3 sevenths to the x, any of these fractions, they all have some similarities. The notes and the assignment called is y equals a to the x. But 0 is less than a is less than 1. These are, number, these are bases that are less than 1, but still bigger than 0. I leave 1 out. 1 is completely boring. It's in the assignment. It's just a straight line along at 1. We, using base 1 doesn't make any sense. We want numbers bigger than 1 or less than 1. They all have a similar look. And once again, on purpose, I haven't given a specific scale here. They all look like this. They come from going way off the page, through a specific point, and then towards the asymptote. So they all have horizontal asymptote, positive x-axis. Its equation is y equals 0. It's heading towards y equals 0. It never gets there, but it's heading there. These are all decreasing 
As you go left to right, this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But this is interesting. All have y-intercept of 1. So they all go through that same point, 0, 1. Okay? Now, only two possibilities. As I write that, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's very clear now. That helps me with exponentials. Or you're like, oh, I didn't know any of those things about exponentials. In which case, you are free to start to panic now, because by this point, with the assignment and the homework and so on, you're supposed to be like, yeah, okay, good. That, that, I'm not saying that should be boring, but it should be like, yeah, I got that about exponentials. That, th that much I understand. But do you have any questions about that? Because if you're panicking, I want to panic with you and explain it more if there's any problems with any of that. Okay, well, if you're too scared to ask, and that's, and that's a real problem, that's a real difficulty, you know, don't be sad, don't be embarrassed, just come see me at lunch. I've, I've had, like, I think in the last week, I've had more great lunchroom sessions between junior and senior. Boy, there's been some breakthroughs for some people where they went, oh, with just a little bit of help, I can do a lot better. Okay? Now, I don't sit in there, folks, because I have no friends. I sit in there because I want to help. It's a scramble for me. I'm not crying the blues. I'm not doing a Mother's Day, Father's Day speech where I'm, oh, I do so much for you and you can't even get me a tie. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm just telling you, I'm there for you. You don't have to walk into math help room and say, sorry, I'm here. That's why I'm there. I scramble to eat my lunch and I'm there to, to try to help so I can go home and feel like I had a good day. Okay. That's supposed to make this first question easy. My explanation is supposed to make question one easy. There's some tough questions come today, let me tell you. Woo! But this is supposed to be easy. Find three possible equations for an exponential function that has y-intercept 1. 2 to the power of x. He could have said anything there. He could have said 3 to the x, 4 to the x, 5 to the x. Any of those won't be an exponential function if it's a 1 to the x. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Even actually, if you're, if you're thinking ahead a little bit, 2.7, 3.8, all those are possible. We don't torture you with those in regular functions. We might see a little more of those in advanced functions, but not really. We, we, we stick to the regular basis. So let's try and get a little more creative here. I could answer this question by going y equals 3 to the x, y equals 4 to the x, and I'd be done. And if that was a test question, I think that's what I'd probably do. I'd just keep things easy. But just to be a little more creative for this one, what other <laughs> options do I have besides 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all those? 38. 38. Totally work. That would be totally creative. 38 to the x would work. One half to the x. Any of the other bases will work too. Any of the decreasing bases. And the reason this happens is if you put in x equals 0, you're going to get 1 either way. So I'm going to push the limits just a little bit on this third one. You don't need to do that here. I'm just starting to get ready for later questions. What if I forced the situation and said, no, I'm going to put a 2 out there or a 3. And I said, like that. Let's see, I forced you into that situation. I said, no, no, I want it to have y-intercept 1, but I'm going to put a 3, a vertical stretch out there. Now it's not y-intercept 1. Now it takes some, some really big thinking. Because right now, if I sub in x equals 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. I've got my 1, but then it vertically stretches by factor 3. Now it's up to 3. It was supposed to be 1. What other transformation could I put on there to fix the problem? Uh, vertical shift minus two. Then just go down 2. And that might seem arbitrary. If you're like, oh, now you're just pulling stuff out of the air? Uh, may maybe. Maybe at this point you can just be like, oh, he just felt like he was going to nerd out on that third one. But I'm not. I'm really up to something for later questions. I'm like, what could I put there? And this would work. If you're not sure, let's sub in x equals 0. y equals 3 times 2 to the 0 minus 2. And 2 to the 0 is 1, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So that works. And you might feel that was unnecessary to torture you like that. But I promise I'm up to something. I'm trying to accomplish something. Any questions there? How many do we got to do? Six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine to do. Okay. Stay focused for nine questions. Next, find three possible equations for an 
exponential function that has y-intercept negative 4. This is why I did that last one, is to go, what if they want y-intercept negative 4? Because if you just go out and write y equals 2 to the x, which is what we did last time, that's not going to have y-intercept of negative 4. It's going to have y-intercept of 1. So what's the, oh, I don't know. Actually, I was about to say, what's the easiest way to fix this problem? I can think of two easy ways, actually, that might occur to you. I don't mean like, oh, I, I'm just showing off. Mr. Todd knows two different ways. That's not what I mean. I mean, when I say, what's the easiest way, you might have two different answers. How could I switch that y-intercept to negative 4? When right now, I know it's 1. Minus 5, I could do a vertical translation down 5. That was one of the two options I thought of that might be the easy way to fix that. To use a translation and just go, okay, this one, y-intercept 1, if I move down 5, now it'll have y-intercept negative 4. If I challenged you to say, no, don't use a translation. Don't move it up or down. What, 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 some kind of compression, right? Because right now, it's going to be a 1. Oh, no. I don't think it'll be a compression. I want to get to 4. Stretch. stretch. So if I stretch this by factor 4, now it won't have y-intercept 1. It'll be stretched to a y-intercept of 4, which is not what I wanted. Oh, negative 4. And, that, and you see that pause there that I had? Oh, what I did didn't work, and now I fixed it. That's a great math move. That's a legitimate math move to go, oh, this is better. Now it's 4. How can I make it negative 4? Well, I did that two different ways that I think are, I don't call, I won't call them easy, but they were essentially one-steppers. Move down 5 or multiply it by negative 4. So let's say I made one up to really challenge the situation. Let's say I went, okay, I'm, I'm going to go out off the reservation here. I'm going to go way out to Pluto here, gone. I'm going to go, okay, what if I made it? 10 times 2 to the x, can you fix it? What's the y-intercept right now? If I just left it as it is, what's the y-intercept right now? Positive 10. But I wanted negative 4. Just move it down 14. I think that's the easiest way to fix these things, is just move them up and down to make them work out. And that's a legitimate math move, is to go, how can I move this thing to go through the point that I want it to go through? Okay, so not too bad, not too bad. We tried to do things that, one and two, I'll try to do that every time. One and two are hopefully ones you're like, I get that. And three is like, oh, no, you're just trying to mess us up now? And number three, I'm like, well, no. I'm trying to get ready for tougher questions is all I'm trying to do in number three. Questions? It's good so far? Which times it's mostly just playing around with the numbers to make it work out? Well, that's all math is, actually, mostly. It's just playing around with the numbers until it works out. Find three possible equations that has an asymptote of y equals 3. Let's go back to my other page, my little scribble thing, which maybe when I was doing it, you're like, whatever. And now you're like, mm, I better get this down. This is like page one of the study sheet. It's like, what is an exponential? There. That's what an exponential is. What asymptote does it have? Do, what's what asymptote do all of them have? y equals 0. Now this one says, which one? No, that's not you. This one says it wants an asymptote at y equals 3. In this case, there's only one way to fix that. There's only one way to take a function and end up with asymptote of asymptote 3. There's only one transformation that accomplishes that. It moves it plus 3. That's going to be the asymptote every single time. So you can do whatever you want. You can have like a base like that, no problem, and it's got to say plus 3 every time. That's huge information. That, that number out by itself is the asymptote. That up and down will decide where the asymptote is. So you can go absolutely nuts here, and this is actually the easiest of the questions we've done so far. Let's say I go negative 57, base 1.7 to the x, none of that matters when it comes to the asymptote. I just have to take that whole thing and move it up 3. So let me just underline that as a big moment. That asymptote is the vertical translation every single time. And I say that, you're like, every single time? Well, is there a tricky one coming? No, no, no. 
Vertical translation is the asymptote. That asymptote is only affected. It's not affected by stretches. It's not affected by anything you do horizontally. Only moving it up and down will move that asymptote. So it's always going to be what the vertical translation is. We're three for nine, are we? It's good. More time there to write the plus threes? My microphone's still working? Yes. Question four. Find the equation for an exponential function. Oh, I have to, I have to do one. Oh, it says, can you find another one? Okay. Can, find an equation for an exponential function that, that has y-intercept five and an asymptote at two. So when I go to make this thing up, one of those two pieces of information locks me right in. This asymptote at y equals two, I'm locked into having a plus two out there. I've got to move up to, I can't play around with that later. But now, I need y intercept five. It's five times, five times okay, good. We gotta do some kind of stretch here. So I'm gonna use three to the x, but I'm going to put a little purple question mark there. If, it, if you're like, how did you come up with three? I just decided I'd use three. Some of these questions will have freedom where you get to decide what number you'd like to put there. But no matter what you choose to put there, that's going to have y-intercept 1 moved up 2 to y-intercept 3. That's not going to work. I need a number there. And now it's going to take a little bit of thought is to go what number to put there. If I put a 5 there, it's going to be 5 times 1 plus 2, which is 7. You can play it like this. You ever watch the show Price is Right? A little bit higher, a little bit lower, a little bit higher, a little bit. You could play like that. You could go, uh, okay, well, five's not going to work. It's going to be lower than that. What number out there? Three, Three times one plus two is five. You could do it like that. If you don't like that, and I'm seeing some people frowning, we can do it with algebra. We totally can do it with algebra. We'd go over here and we'd go, okay. When x equals zero, y equals five. That's what that's saying there. And now I can use algebra to solve for that number. Because I go, okay, that means I need a 5 out there. I don't know what a is, but I know this is 3 to the 0, and I know that's plus 2. This is powerful mathematics. Just go, okay, I, I don't know what it is, and I want to play around. I don't want to play prices right here and try and guess and check to see what this thing is. I'll just put in the important point there, and it doesn't take long. This isn't particularly difficult mathematics going on over here. So we call it in calculus, we call it sub and solve. And this is your first real introduction to it, is that it's like, I don't know what number to put there. And we always go sub and solve, sub and solve. I'm looking on, see if the calculus people did it today, because they, they do it all the time. It's just, they just sub a number in and solve for what they're looking for. So now this will work. Could other things work? Yes, there are other possibilities of what I could work, what, what I could work, because I could have gone, any base would have worked there. That will do the same thing. So when you look in the back for your answers, there are some questions that have some freedom there. The, the base didn't matter. Don't believe me? Well, let's sub in 0. If I sub in 0, what's 10 to the 0? 1 times 3 is 3 plus 2 is 5. It works. Okay, that one works. If you're, if you're not sure, you could plug it into Desmos and just double check. But don't underestimate this. This is the best thing I've showed you today. Maybe the best thing I've showed you all chapter is a technique that I call sub and solve. Where you're like, I don't know what to do. Sub in what you have, you'll be able to solve for what you need. Does that always work in life? No. Sometimes there isn't enough information. But it certainly works in grade 11 math. There'll be exactly the information you need to sub and solve. But do you have any questions there? Do you need more time? Question five, find an equation for an exponential function that has y-intercept of negative eight and asymptote negative three. Okay, somebody in their own words. In the second half here, I gotta get more help. In their own words, from that sentence, is there something you know for sure? You need a negative three. Yeah, let me just write that down. Y equals, he knows this. That asymptote is only affected by vertical translations. I know that's a negative three. I don't know what base, and I don't know what vertical stretch to use. So at this point, you might be wondering. Now, 
Nathan says he's got to go. Negative 5 2 to the x. I know what he was saying. I just changed your language slightly. How did you do it, Nathan? Um, I just know minus 5 and minus 3 equal negative 8. He's seeing through this now. He's seeing that to get the y-intercept, this is going to be 1. When you sub in 0, that's going to be 1. And do you see the negative 8 there that he sees? Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Yeah? He's, got, he's got a method to handle these. Some people will be unsatisfied with that. You're like, I don't want some method where I just have to cover things up and wave at things. Okay. To get to what he's got using algebra, you could try y equals a, and he used 2 to the x, minus 3. You could say, I don't know what vertical stretch to use. I don't know how he came up with that. Well, then you'd use sub and solve. Sub in the y-intercept, which is 0, 1. That's what a y intercept, or 0, negative 8, sorry. Was it 0, 1 last one? I don't know. Anyways, that's what y-intercept of negative 8 means. So if you're having trouble with that, when you read a y-intercept, write the coordinates up there to remind yourself. You actually know the coordinates. A y-intercept of negative 8 is 0, negative 8. And this is what he did by seeing through the question, is he went, oh, 2 to the zeros going to be 1 when I sub in 0. And then he moved the negative 3 over. No, he didn't. He just looked at it and knew what it was. But for you algebraic people, you're going to like this better. Let me solve for that A. And I got news coming up in the second half of these questions. There's something that gets challenging where you're going to be stuck with sub and solve. But, you're, but there are questions where you don't need sub and solve. As long as you understand what the exponential equation is doing, you don't need to use sub and solve. But I pause for questions because this is a pretty advanced technique. It might be simple, but it's not easy. It's not just like, oh yeah, just well, that's, that's easy. No, no. It's simple. It only takes a couple steps to do it. But it is difficult to set it up and do it right. Yeah? Is it the, the, solve the sub and solve part. Yeah, the sub and solve part. And I, it, you're not going to... There might be a textbook somewhere that calls it sub and solve, but it's not universally called that. That's just something I say because I find it triggers a uh, student's memory when I say sub and solve. Oh, okay. Take something about the, about the situation, sub it in, and solve for what I'm looking for. Yeah. <sighs> Questions there? Numero six. Fi oh, here we go. Find the equation for an exponential function as y intercept 7 asymptote 2 and passes through 247. Okay, if you've been sleeping through this lesson, I understand how it happens. Didn't eat enough breakfast, stayed up doom scrolling too late last night, boring period one, and now your brain's not all the way in. You better tune in now. This is where this whole lesson comes together. And in fact, it's better than that. If you understand this one, you're going to look back at the first five and think they were easy, if you can follow what I do here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write y equals a b to the x plus c. And I just put the a, b's, and c's there. If you've memorized an old version of a's, b's, and c's, and d's, no, the d goes there, no, the f goes there, none of that really matters for this question. I just put three letters in three spots. And I went, okay, there's three things I don't know. Now, if you're like, well, can't there be a horizontal translation? We found out yesterday that there's always a way to use the simplest base. So I'm assuming that I'm going to use the simplest base. That's all. I'm just going to say I'm going to make it into the simplest base. So I'm not going to have anything weird going on in the exponent because I could just take that out and make it the simplest base. So simplest base formula. In fact, every exponential you see in the real world, they just use this because they go, I can always put it into the simplest base. Now, that is, that's some powerhouse mathematics. Just writing that down and going, there's the road map. There's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the vertical stretch. I'm looking for the base to use. And I'm looking for the vertical translation. Those are the only three things I'm looking for. I'm not setting you up for failure, by the way. This will work on all exponentials. Now I reread the question. And I decide, is there, because there's three unknowns here. That's scary. But is there one of the unknowns we can just pick off? Find the equation for the exponential function as y-intercept 7, an asymptote at y equals 2. Yes. So this here, the asymptote at y equals 2, is the c. I'm going to underline all of that for you. When they give you the asymptote, you already know the vertical translation. So this is a bad situation. No question about it. This is difficult. But 
I know that much because that's the asymptote. Now I've got two pieces of information. Really scary. I'm going to do a double sub and solve. A double sub and solve. I've got this point, which is 0, 7, and I've got this point, 247. Now I'm going to help you with a little wisdom here, though. If you've got two sub and solves to do, do the one that's easier first, because something might, good might happen. Which of these numbers is easier to sub in? Zero, 0,7, because subbing in 0 is good news. Even if that was 1, 7, it might not be great news. But subbing in 0, great stuff's going to happen. So split this in half, sub in 0, 0,7. Hold on. I know exactly what you're saying. He says, if I graphed all this information, wouldn't I be able to see what's going on and be able to pick off some of this information pretty, pretty easily? And the answer is yes, except for one little thing. 2 comma 47. Right? And, and you might be like, oh, no, I can graph 47. Just give me a second here. I'll just graph 47. What if this was 806? That's not what I'm saying. 47.4. Okay, let me just answer that question first, because people might be wondering that, if the graph can help here. And sometimes the graph can, but the number's got a little big here. But go ahead. Well, Say it again. If you do, like, if you know that zero, when it, it, the x is zero, the y is seven. Yeah. So then now you're left with, when it's at the second point, it's at 40. 40, which means, wait, if you, ah, yeah, never mind. Fair enough. Uh, you, you actually are onto something. I was just gonna but it might not be as useful and easy as it might have occurred to you, where this is. Once you get used to sub and solve, I'm going to tell you the calculus people, they're happy when sub and solve shows up. They think that's pretty straightforward compared to the other math they're doing. Because when I sub in 0, 7, watch what happens here. I sub in 7 here, and I sub in 0 there. And I don't know what b is, but I do know what b to the 0 is. It's always 1. And look what you get here. Sometimes sub and solve Pays off huge. Takes all the, I was going to take all the, th it says take all, all the thinking out of it. It doesn't take all the thinking out of it. It just allows you to use an algebraic technique to easily solve for the vertical stretch here. I now know what the vertical stretch is. Now, some people make a mistake then. They go over here to do the second sub. Sub in, what was it, 247? And they write what they got here. Don't write that. We now know what A is. Y equals 5B to the X plus 2. And don't, see, see how my numbers and the letters here are getting a little squiggly? That's my active board coming apart at the seams here. December 4th is the day. Apparently, they've got a work order. They're ready to go here. So I sub in 47 for Y, and I sub in... 2 for the x. And you might be a little scared, but you shouldn't be. This isn't that bad of a situation. Yeah? Because there's only one unknown. So I. Why no 2, though? Oh, that's the asymptote or whatever, though? Hmm? Why is. Oh, wait, I'm I'll show the steps. But I'm hoping as I show the steps, you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. If you have an objection, I want to hear your objection in just a second, okay? I'm going to finish off the question, and then I'm going to explain the objection away, okay? Because you should have an objection. Based on what I've taught, you should have an objection. Therefore, A was 5, the base was 3, and the shift was 2. You can check it, too. If I take that 2 and sub it in here, 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45 is 47. It works. Hey, so you can check to see these things work. There should be an objection. I heard someone say it. Why isn't the square plus or minus? Why isn't it plus or minus? And the answer is because it's an exponential. In exponential functions, we made some rules. We said a has to be greater than 1, or a has to be between 0 and 1. And you say, oh, what well, couldn't a be negative? We haven't found an application yet for negative bases of exponents. We haven't found anything that grows at a negative base rate. 
We've seen that things at a negative rate. Well, we sort of leave negatives out here. And I don't have a perfect explanation for that just right now. But you'll find when you actually do ap applications, the growth rate will always be a positive number. It might be a decimal, but it won't be a negative. All right? So not that we couldn't mathematically do it. It just probably doesn't make any sense for, for regular graphs. Okay? So I'll write that here. Positive to be an exponential. But I'm okay if you don't accept my explanation very well at this point. You're just like, couldn't we make something with a negative base? There's just no, is no real application for that. There's, no, there's no, nothing that makes that work out. And weird things happen with negative bases. I think that's as hard as they get right there. And if you look back at all the other questions, you could have done them with this method, but it would be overkill. It wasn't until there was too much information that you might want to go to that. And here's the key, by the way, for tonight's homework. It's just writing that equation and going, there's three things i got to f figure out. The base, the vertical stretch, and the vertical translation. I can always write it with those three things. Do you have any questions? What number was that? Six? Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. And we're done. Incidentally, folks, look at this. This is from Calculus today on the board. Look at what they're graphing. That's an exponential. Now they're using E as the base, which it's okay if that looks completely mysterious, but they're using, they're doing the same thing. So we're building towards good stuff here. Seven. Find an equation for an exponential function that has x-intercept 2, y-intercept 45, and an asymptote at y equals 48. Here's what I said to write. When things get a little wild, just write this equation and go, here's what i got to figure out. The vertical stretch, the base, and the vertical translation. We can always get it back to all vertical if we use the lowest base. What do you got? Challenge yourself. Don't listen to somebody else. Don't wait for somebody else. Challenge yourself to go, do I already know one of these? Yes. The 48. The 48, I already know. The asymptote will be the C value. Oh, he looks and he goes, why intercept 45? So he thinks he can already figure out the A. Okay, but I'm not going to force you to do it. If you already can figure it out, then you do it. And I'm going to do sub and solve, because I really believe in sub and solve. I really believe once you get the hang of sub and solve, you won't think it's the hardest thing ever. So I've got two points to put in here. What are the coordinates of the Y intercept? And I encourage you, whenever you're reading these questions, just immediately write down the coordinates. Yeah, so Y intercept, this will be 0, 45. And the X intercept, will be 2 comma 0. And it might be mysterious right now which one to do. So I'm going to do both at the same time and see which one gives results. Double, sub, and solve. Ooh, I didn't want to make that line that long. So I'm going to do one sub and solve here, and I'm going to do one sub and solve over there. Over here I'm going to sub in 2, 0. And I know from experience which one of these is going to work out better. But I'm going to do them both at the same time to show you that you don't need to know which one's going to work out better. Just do them both and pray, cross your fingers, that one of them works out really good. Huh? So here we go. Sub in 2, 0. Uh, 0 for the y. 2 for the x. Hopefully that makes you go, huh, huh I don't know how to do I can't. How do I solve for a and b in this one? That'll happen in sub and solve sometimes. Relax, go do your other sub and solve, and hope for the best. Yeah, so you go over here, sub in 0, 45, I get 45 equals A times B to the 0 plus 48. And maybe that's enough to learn the lesson, subbing in X equals 0 is usually a really good move. Yeah? Here I get 45 equals A plus 48, and this is what Kyle was saying, is he could already see what the A was going to be. It's 45 minus 48. which is negative 3, and then write this in your notes. <coughs> Watch this move. When you do double sub and solve, and you get something over here, you just draw a little arrow and go, ah, there, now I've got that number. 
from the other sub and solve. So don't panic when sub and solve doesn't pay off right away. Negative 3b squared plus 48. And once you get to there, hopefully you're like, okay, well, I can order a pizza now. Send, get, send over that meat lovers because I'll be done in just a second here. Negative 48. I'll go the other way, actually, just to show I can. That's negative this time, so I'm going to go over here. 3b squared equals 48. b squared equals 48 over 3. b squared equals 16. Oh, how nice is Mr. Todd making it work out to a nice number. b equals plus or minus root 16. But which b do we want? We're using positive bases. We're going to use positive bases, and I don't claim to over explain that right now. Now I'm ready to state the answer. Therefore, y equals a was negative 3, base was 4, move up 48, and then you could sub in and double check if it works. Don't underestimate how powerful that is. That's, that's awesome mathematics. Nathan. So if you do the sub ins, the 0 and 45, you already get the negative 3. So why do you have to solve for b if anything equals 1 anyways? Huh? It's a great question because it also wanted this x-intercept. If I just had had this question right there, y-intercept 45 and asymptote 48, I could have used any base I want. But only the base of 4 gives an x-intercept of 2 as well. So that extra information makes it a little more complicated. So he actually, he's doing a, he doesn't know, but he's called me out on that these questions can be harder than they look because you don't know what you're ser searching for. You don't know how much. You don't know when you have freedom and when you don't. So I'll give another answer to the question. If they only give you two pieces of information, you've probably got some freedom. Yeah. If they give you three pieces of information, they've locked you right down. So this question gave three pieces of information, meaning three unknowns, they've locked it down. Okay. Two more to go. I think the next one says challenging, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, ah! I, made up the I actually made up that question, and I, don't, I didn't even do it beforehand. I didn't know exactly how it was going to play out. But I just thought, oh, it's fun to do a really challenging one on a Tuesday. Yes, of course, on Tuesday, we would do a really challenging one. So this one, very challenging. Oh, I know what to do. Okay. What would you do first? Well, you got to do like, oh, well, first of all, the asymptote, you know, is negative 0.1. Okay, I I'm going to correct him here. He's, he's, he's running in, and I'm just saying, when you get to a question like this, just write that down, first of all. So you're framing what you have to accomplish here. I need the vertical stretch, I need the base, and I need the vertical translation. Yeah, but like, because like I remember like in grade 10, we did like to find the intercept, you ought to do like x2 and like minus x1 like over like y or something like that. Not helpful here at all. No, really, eh? Yeah. Um, but with y inter... <laughs> So Astote negative 4? What do I know about the situation? It's up. C is negative 4. Okay. And many of the questions give you that much. Now I will do a double sub and solve. And every time I write that line too far. So over here, when x equals 2, y equals 41. And over here, when x equals 1, y equals 11. No zeros to sub in. That's why this one's so challenging, because I'm not subbing in zero anywhere. You like subbing this one in first? When there's two sub and solves, you can take a guess and go, which one is going to work better? But it may not. And that's what happens here. When I sub in 1, 11, I get 11 equals a b to the 1 minus 4. And this is very upsetting. Oh, oh, wait, I can move the 4 over. I get 15. A times B is 15. Yeah, that's exactly the right word. He looks at that and goes, thanks a lot, Mr. Todd. Because what happened in the other ones, and I think what happens in most of the homework ones, is that one of the sub and solves gave you one of the numbers. It didn't happen here. So you go over here and you're like, well, maybe over here this will work better. Subbing in 2 and 41. It doesn't. 41 equals 
a b squared minus 4. Uh, wasn't 241. 241, 111, 15. Yeah, that's right. Bring the 4 over. I can do that much. 45 equals a b squared. Now listen, folks. If on a test, I, I, I'm not putting one of these on the test. I'm not doing it. But if, some, if, if a teacher did, or an advanced function that happened, or a calculus that happened, or in your midterm in your first university this happened, and if I was going to mark this out of five marks, how many marks do you already have in the bank? Four, two. I'm Me as a marker, I already see three marks out of five. Don't pound your head on your desk working on this, go, hey, I got three out of five on the tough one already, and go on to other things. That's how you get into time trouble, is by pounding your head on tough questions. Go, hey, I'm off to a great start. I have no idea what to do next. So I'm going to do it two ways. The first way is I'm going to do it the thinking way, and then I'll do it the algebraic way. A times B is 15, and A times B times B again is 45. What's B? When I multiply A and B together, I get 15. If I multiply by B again, see, that's why she's my favorite Danino. If I multiply by B again, I get 45. It must be 3. Okay? You should not like that at all. Because you're like, what if it's like 2.7? I won't be able to think that through. So what I'm going to do, and this is not on your test, what I'm going to do is solve for A over here. This is called solving by substitution, which you have seen. I'm going to go, therefore, A is 15 divided by B. I don't know what it is yet, but now I can take this, and I'm going to try and do what I did over there. Where do you get B from 3? Because if, because, because if, you, then, or if you say yeah. 3 plus 5 is 15 and B squared is 3. Is well, you've got new respect for your friend Alicia now. What? This is really scary. But B squared divided by B is B. And somehow she saw through this and found out that B was 3. So what's A? 5. Okay, now we can go back. And this is a great picture of what substitution is all about. You solve for something over here, you put it over there, and then you bring it back. And you just, woo! A is 15 over 3, so the A equals 5. Then y equals 5 times 3 to the x, and I've already forgotten what the other piece was. It is fine if you're looking at that going, I don't like that. Because it's really more of an advanced functions slash calculus level question. But I put it in there just to get more sub and solve in. So when you've got to do one sub and solve, you feel like a happy little camper. Yeah? I'm hungry, is your random thought there? Yeah. That was a challenging one. You should take this and just give the question to your brothers and just see what happens. Yeah, see, and just say, this, this is what I was able to do today without Mr. Todd showing me, just to watch, to see what happens. <laughs> I taught Marco and I taught Peter. How old's Peter now? 23. 23. That's going back. That was good fun. That's a tough question. But remember, I put challenging there before it even started with an exclamation mark. Let's go back to an easier one with a graph. Yeah. Here's your graph. Our job, find the equation. All the y-intercepts too, though, for sure. Already got the y-intercept. I think graphs are a little bit easier sometimes because you just go, oh, when x equals 0, y equals 2. I'm going to do that sub and solve in a minute, but do you see the asymptote there? 5. 5. Easy again. So that's like 3 then, right? No, that's a negative 3 or something like that. A is going to be negative 3 or something like that. So, when x equals 0, y equals 2, 
They gave me that point. And what's b to the 0? 1. one. So the a is negative 3 here. And that might be the end of the question. But there is another point I can use. Do you see it? I also know it's got to go through 1, negative 1. There might be other points to use. I don't know if there's any other obvious points. I made sure there was one obvious point, but sometimes there'll be other obvious points to use. So I also know when x equals 1, y equals negative 1. So I get y equals a b to the x plus 5. I'm going to make a mistake here, okay? Not a mistake. Did I write that properly? I subbed in x equals 1. Yes? The plus 5 was already there. Yes? The negative 1 goes over. Yes, that's all good. But I can't solve for a or b either. But I already have a. Okay? So don't get confused by my challenging one that you're going to always have two unknowns. That, that, that's never going to happen. I don't, I don't think there is one in the homework where you have two unknowns. Usually, one of the sub and solves pays off. And so let me write that red arrow again as a trigger if you're re-watching this video. I've got that A this time. So then life's easier after that. Yeah. 